We had 500 years, maybe propaganda, uh, messages on boxes of cereal, photographs on cartons of milk, I don't know, something <laughs> might do it. But we don't have 500 years. We must come to a screeching halt now, because we are barreling toward the brink of ruin. And uh, the only thing that I have ever seen that turned anybody around on the dime was psychedelics, <laughs> you know? The, the talking cures invented by Freud and Jung, Jung at the beginning of this century, it takes years. Sometimes it never happens. The body work that came along behind that with Vel Wilhelm Reich and others, uh, Feldenkrais and, uh, and so forth, uh, Ida Rolf, all of this brings it into the theater of the body. At least now we understand it's a body-mind system. It's not a disembodied voice lying on a couch speaking, you know. But it, it seems so obvious what we're trying to do is perturb the mind. We want to perturb the mind so that we can then see it differently, so that it may see and be seen differently. Well, the mind rests on a foundation of chemical machinery. We're not saying the mind is chemical machinery. We're saying the mind rests on a foundation of chemical machinery. So if you want to perturb the mind, you don't go to the talking. You don't go to the deep tissue. All of this has eff efficacy, but it is necessary, but not sufficient by itself. For there to be a sufficiency of method, there must be an initial perturbation of the mind. And this comes about through the use of psychedelic plants. This is not something that was discovered post-LSD uh, in Manhattan by psychiatrists or in Prague or Berlin or at Esalen. This is a truth 25,000, 50,000, 100,000 years old. This is how it's always been done. Only in the last 6,000 years on the European continent and those civilizations that are the children of Europe has there been any other approach to these problems. Well, and, and what the other approach, linear thought, the phonetic alphabet, science, mathematical abstraction, so forth and so on, what these other approaches have brought us is uh, toxicity, pollution, mutation, catastrophe, revolution, death, and yes, friends, even unhappiness. <laughs> it hasn't worked. Western civilization is now crowing over the fact that the only opposition it ever had, which was Marxism, a pathetic, weak sister, has now collapsed upon itself. Well, there should be no congratulation in that because the contradictions which undid Marxism lie in wait to undo this society as well. Both societies are materialistic. <laughs> Both societies define human beings and treat them as things. And the fact of the matter is, Western civilization at this moment is a loaded gun pointed at the head of this planet. And we, for all our pretensions to uh, a sensitivity to the presence of vitamin C or zinc in our diet or all the rest of this malarkey, we are the major uh, preva uh, prevaricators of this situation. So a certain um, obligation rests upon us. And I think we're meeting this obligation. Uh, I wouldn't say we're doing a great job or a terrible job. I think we're functioning uh, at approximately a B-plus level. You see, I mean, human life is so ephemeral. I mean, a person 
a person who lives 70 or 80 years is really as ephemeral as a mayfly or something. I mean, it's not long enough to get the full picture. For instance, many of you, by virtue of not having spent a great deal of time thinking about it, uh, probably don't realize uh, that this psychedelic plant shamanism option, this is not something that Western civilization has grappled with for centuries and come to terms with and found the proper pigeonhole for and put aside. Not at all, my friends. The fact of the matter is all of this information about psychedelics has arrived in Western society in the last hundred years. And uh, we have to say hundred years because we want to include things like mescaline, 1895-98, it was, began to be studied in Germany, and things like ibogaine, which was known toward the end of the last century, but which has had virtually zilch impact on American psychedelic populations. Uh, so we have to say the psychedelic option has only been an object of the Western mind's curiosity for approximately a hundred years. But really, 90% of that occurred in the last 50 years. As many of you know, uh, I am a great uh, fan and spokesman for psilocybin, for the mushrooms. The mushrooms that I am so stoked on uh, were discovered in 1953 by Gordon and Valentina Wasson in Watla, discovered in 53, made absolutely Schedule I illegal in 1966. <laughs> Thirteen years was the window in which Western civilization had to study this compound and figure out what it was for. And they were just beginning to focus upon it when it was made illegal. LSD discovered in 37, not brought into the scientific literature until 48, not generally available even in the laboratory until 1950, made totally illegal in 1966. 16 year window. Think about the fact that when LSD was legal, uh, psychiatrists, Professional researchers were consistently reporting cures of chronic alcoholism with one 500 gamma dose. One dose. Cure, uh, uh, like a 50% cure rate without recidivism for chronic alcoholism. Spectacular findings were being reported. When LSD swept through the scientific community, it, for, for pharmacologists, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, it had the same kind of excitement and feeling of breakthrough that the splitting of the atom had for the, physicist, for the physics community in the late 30s. Well, science we are told is this absolutely impartial, godlike body of knowledge prosecuted by great men, and it will fearlessly send its questing mind into any situation or environment. This is a, a mental discipline so dispassionate that it sees nothing at all wrong with strapping monkeys into apparatus and hurling them into walls at 70 miles an hour to study traumatic injuries. This is a discipline so unflinching in its pursuit of truth that it will design tiny television cameras to be implanted in plastic penises so that we can see the changes in the color of the vaginal wall as it approaches orgasm. I mean, these guys are unstinting in their devotion to truth in any form. And yet, and yet, for 